Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. You can get a job in the Middle East simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke. Remember that competition is everywhere. Some here, some there, but bam, Loy Macedo is the best. Oh, here's an interesting question for you. Given my tattooed face and even that fact that I'm tattooed, who would give me a job? Means employment. In fact, uh, if you check some of my videos, <laughs> people say, Kya hal banaya? Kya? Kya hal banaya hai? Something like that. They say in Hindi means, what the hell did he do to himself or some some other people e uh, yeah, uh, what the uh, what, uh, what the fuck i bumped into umaga or uh, uh, who is this ray mysterious <laughs> brother or who oh, i didn't know darth maul was from india but then uh, there are other comments which say that uh, yeah who the hell would give you a job man you know with this face of yours who would give you a job and uh, before I used to respond, but then I was like, how many times do I respond to this? So I thought I'll give you a video. Who would give me a job giving, given the fact that I look like this? In fact, I think the better question to ask is, given that I stayed in Dubai, you know, 40 years of my life, but the actual tattoo process started at the age of 31. So from 31 to... Uh, 40, nearly 9 years, how did I survive in UAE? How did I survive? How did I get a job? Okay. Now, how did I get a visa and how did I legally come into the country? That's a separate video that I don't want to mix. If you want to know that, comment down below. If I get enough and more people interested, I'll speak. But now, how did I get a job? Now, let's, let's call a spade a spade. <laughs> <laughs> Given that I look like this, nobody in their right mind should give me a job. Okay, let, let's face it. In fact, let's assume I never had a tattoo. Okay, and as a normal person, if I look at someone with tattoo, like, what the hell did he do, man? It's like, yeah, this is so extreme. Like, why the hell would he do that? Uh, I'm, I'm being honest. You think I'm not aware of this? If I never had a tattoo in my life, and I see that also tattoo is permanent, that too, a guy tattooed his face, I'll be like, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's my fat neighbor. She nearly, hope she's okay. <laughs> I scare her and <laughs> she scraped uh, the side when turning. Hope she's okay. <laughs> See, people get scared of my tattoo. So, uh, given that I look like this, I mean, if I would see a guy with a tattoo, I'll be like, why the fuck would you do that, man? What the hell is wrong with you? Like, are you nuts? Like, uh, it's not a devoid of common sense. I know that. Okay, but now it comes down to... Okay, fine. The person's gone mad and uh, he has started... Now, the question would be, who the hell would give you a job, man? You know, like, I have seen one guy on Facebook. He has painted his eyeballs blue and his face half blue and other half uh, the same then there is guys who look like a lizard there are people who like the world record holder who is my facebook friend ralph bolch bolch whatever bolchberg or whatever he's the world's most pierced man he has piercings more than 168 on his face including two horn implants he looks like a devil okay you can google search now <laughs> <laughs> he started everything, including his eyeballs. And guess what? He, he's in Germany. He even does uh, suspension videos. Suspension is where they put hooks inside your skin and hang you. You know, they put on his butt and legs and all that. I don't know, they get a high by doing that, floating in the air on a tree or something. They do that. Now, you'll not believe he's a celebrity in Germany. Girls die to meet him. Women, I know you'll be like, hey, are crazy people only. They are ready to have sex with him. They want to make adult videos with him. Okay, fine. But do you know that he works as a banker? Seriously, he works as a banker in a bank. Now you'll be like, ah, those people must be crazy. So now comes to me. 
who the hell would give me a job when i myself look at other people and wonder who the hell would give them a job would they be taken as security well yeah that'll be a good idea people looking at him would get scared at least then uh, would he be a nightclub bouncer uh, maybe not someone stronger can beat him so what would he do would he do programming or like me online consulting okay so in dubai i you know when i decided to get tattoos that i had a stable job and throughout my life i always kept a strategy whereby i would interact only with the ceos of the company okay from a very early age early age means say by i think 25 onwards from the age of 25 i made it a point only to interact with decision decision makers people who are in positions of power why because i found speaking to the managers or speaking to the lower level they are insecure they have so many hang ups yeah you know they they behave like idiots okay so i never wanted to uh go through them and obviously if you show confidence and all that the guys at the lower level they end up uh, getting so insecure about you they don't even speak about you hey doggy how are you doggy see doggy they don't even speak about you to the decision maker okay because they don't want someone smart or dynamic or whatever so i was like okay hell with these guys i don't want to speak to lower level guys and then be taken an interview by them hey, tell me you know this and that I'm like hey, shut up man you know if i would see you outside i wouldn't even spit on your face hey, like a clown and you're telling me you know the same guys or managers if you meet them outside they wouldn't have the confidence to even talk to you so i is to is like i only want to meet decision makers and ceos and so i know that sounds very pompous so or... but you don't believe i ended up meeting them maybe because i used to do djing events i was an anchor mc i was into public speaking and uh, i used to give speeches and even from a young age huh, i used to give speeches and uh, motivational inspirational or presentation speeches and so i used to always get at the higher level people approaching me okay so at the age of 30 i started working for quick electric with the uh, owner of the company you know he told me you join me and don't worry no targets no nothing i'll just give training he liked me basically so that time i didn't have any tattoos and i was a suit nice corporate looking guy but slowly you know given the fact i'm getting a easy salary no targets enjoy my life i have a Lexus RX 330 have a studio apartment paid I have nothing to do other than to just hang around with the CEO slowly want to kill time right i started going to the gym i started uh, uh, making friends obviously girls every day i was sleeping with one girl or another every day not exaggerating finally it came down to boredom so tattoos because i wanted to stand out now he didn't know i had tattoos and i started to get more 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 first it was inside the uh, you know corporate outfit very soon i started to get confident that even though i had tattoos i could still function in a society and that was where the very first tattoo that i got i think was on my hand but before i did get it on my hand i was really nervous i know you must be like why don't you get to the point listen i'll tell you how it happened so the first time i got this tattoo before that i was scared to get this because until now the tattoos were inside my sleeve so i used to show off when i used to take out my shirt and people started to know that i have tattoos but even though they knew i had tattoos they would still call me for events functions so my confidence grew that oh even if i have tattoos people call me for events functions conferences seminars then before i get this i painted with the i did with a marker on my hand black marker to see what people's reaction would be because i'm not sure whether i should get it or not when i got it when i put the marker and i went for 2 3 days everyone like, oh shit you got a tattoo on your hand so no man marker so everyone said oh shit you got a tattoo on your hand but then oh it's a marker but then i realized it's eh, not such a big deal i ended up getting it i'll tell you the first day i got it after i got it 
when i went to my like shit i made a mistake seriously <laughs> i tried to wash it with soap and all i like, fuck i'm dead now what will i do and lo and behold obviously i can't hide it from my boss no and then my that employer and mentor he saw it he didn't say anything i could make out that he was not very happy with it but he kept quiet soon i got it on my other hand fine now until now i'm getting slowly confident that nobody is reacting in a bad way other than attention then came the tattoos on the neck there also same thing people oh you got a new tattoo oh this but then i think the critical junction was when i decided to get the mike tyson one okay the mike tyson one was oof, you will not believe i went four times to the tattoo artist his name is jerick the filipino guy and he had done majority of my body four times i went to him four times both he was nervous and i was nervous all the times he said lo man are you sure because you can't undo it because until then nobody had a face tattoo in uae okay nobody and uh, we were in two minds should, should we get it should we not what and even when i went there when you say are you sure are you sure i'd get cold feet oh fuck man i can't and i'd go back finally one day mustered enough courage to help with this and i got the tattoo i went got the tattoo oh what a feeling i was like fuck what did I? you know i really didn't know how the world would react to my surprise everyone who knew me saw it and i oh fuck lo you got a tattoo on your face oh shit and very soon it became normal you know and then again i realized and nobody gives a fuck about this so from there on i became more crazy and more bold but obviously by the time age of 36 lost my job lost everything you know 36 got sent off from ue but then after i came back all these started so until now i give you how i got this how i got the courage to do it but now by the time 36 had come i had uh, resigned from the job with this uh, mentor of mine and i had promised another job with a company called lobo management in world trade center don't know if they are still there they promised and then they backtracked so i was left hanging and then i joined that guy who was selling fake degrees in india sorry fake degrees in the middle east from india he is there till this date he is there and he is still doing it okay so i worked with him and yeah he is the owner and i didn't have to give a fuck about him once so i got more tattoos so that is why i didn't stop i didn't regret i didn't think about it then what happened was after things went south with him came back to uh, was sent off to india through contacts and connections got my ban removed came back to ue okay and there once again did the same strategy met up with the ceos and decision makers and kept getting jobs but by the time i realized this is not working out for me i can't take up employment i didn't want to be under someone i was too rebellious i was too confident i was too cocky and even even though known people employed me i was not getting along with the system either the whole department didn't like me or you know because as employed from the owner they gave me a cold shoulder and obviously the employer is a businessman he has requirements i didn't want to take shit so lo and behold i decided as no longer going to be an employee okay i was directly going to offer services where it would be short term contracts contracts as in doing a show djing anchoring shows maybe giving a one hour training one day training you know that kind of stuff so all this while if you notice i never even gave a cv and you know it's common sense if i would send a cv to some unknown person they would look at the photograph because in the middle east you need a photograph what the fuck they would be like what the hell is this they would you know make fun call me just to have fun at my expense and you know i was too proud to uh, get interviewed by any low level guy decision makers i didn't mind but in order to meet a decision maker sending a cv to a decision maker does not work unless he asks for it or you know he agrees to meet you or uh, you just bump into him and give it to him face to face so even though i had a cv 
I never used it. And uh, you know, if I would send a CV without a photograph, and then they would see me, they would laugh. And from the outside, I didn't want to go through all that hassle. So finally, I decided, okay, now I will get jobs, freelance. Now, once again, the question of who would still employ you? I went through only known people, known people who would introduce me to known people, to who they knew. And obviously, I would tell them, make sure that you tell them that I've tattooed and, you know, this is how I am. So that is how it would go about. Obviously, it became a kind of novelty to see me the first time and, oh, sheesh, you have tattooed, man. Oh, my goodness. Sir. And you'll not believe I met lots of decision makers, lots of big guys. Like big guys are standing there, just, hey, hi, how are you? Whoa, what the? They would go like this, you know, because they're meeting me at a social event. So I always, and I was not shy to meet big guys, shakes and this and that. But obviously, you have to be smart which event. You can't go to an Islamic <laughs> conference being tattooed. So I would go for events where there are, you know, people, alcohol, open minded kind of atmosphere. Did it work? All the time, no, but majority of the times it worked. But now comes, why should they take me? See, now I've told you how I managed to meet these guys, but why? Now, obviously, when you meet someone who's tattooed, you don't want to just invite him to your office in front of everyone, and it'll be embarrassing. Oh, shit, he is called this tattooed clown, like a freak. Or... So what I'd normally do is, my strength was public speaking, training. So I would offer to give them a training session for their company, valued at whatever market price I knew at that time. And I would tell the owner, listen, I have a training program that I offer for X amount of money. And I would show them that uh, these are the places where I did it. You know, before, I have, when I was without tattoos, I would show the photographs of, you know, full seminars where I was a guest speaker. I would say, see, I trained in these places. You don't have to pay me anything, just take care of the food and this and that for your staff. I'll give them an inspiring talk and, you know, for productivity and this and that. And the owners didn't mind because it was on a day off. And it was, I made it fun. Eventually, uh, you know, people started recommending to other people. Then they would invite me for conferences. Then they'd invite me for seminars. And so the chain was built. It, you know, like a domino effect. So every time I was called to give another function, and that's how I got jobs. And believe it or not, if I would conduct one training session, you could be rest assured they would offer me a contract, paid contract. But, you know, like I said, short term was always fun. Long term, never enjoyed. So this is how I made. So in a nutshell, I don't know what takeaways you got, but I'll give you some takeaways. Number one is... You need to know your strengths and weaknesses. You have to be very clear about it. I was very practical. I knew for a fact my face was a major drawback. I knew for a fact my personality was a major drawback. I knew for a fact what I clearly wanted and what I could clearly offer in terms of value. I had all these points. So given my drawbacks, what's the point if you look like a moron and you apply? In my case, a freak. Second one is, given the fact I was rebellious, I didn't want to be interviewed by pieces of shit. I never went to them. I went straight away to the CEOs, decision makers. Now, in your case, if you don't, if you feel the same, that these guys are pieces of shit at the lower level, you need to figure out how to go to the top guy, right? So for the top guy, my strategy was meet them at events, conferences, events, uh, seminars, and give them a value-added proposal. And... 99.99% they always agreed. And then execution, it was done perfectly. So, and yes, if they ever asked for my CV, my CV those days, now I, I don't know why I don't have a copy of it, because I think I made so many versions of it. That CV that time, it was one page, beautifully put, very simple. It was so simple that people would, that's it. <laughs> Over the years, yeah, I have changed. But I wish, uh, it was a one-page CV. Uh, but one thing about that CV was, one half was my actual experience, the other half was the value that I could offer them and every person I would go, it would be customized. In fact, my CV, 
Here's a trade secret. My CV was addressed to profile of Loy Macedo, uh, addressed to the company that has given. You know, addressed to them. So it's exclusively only for them. So they'd be like, oh, okay, this profile is only for us. So it would never go to any other company. Or, and if it did, because obviously I would change my content, I would tell them, they'd ask, why have you changed something? I said, I only offer you what I know is of value to you. Telling you something that I can do, which doesn't offer value, doesn't make sense. So people appreciated that, but you don't do that. <laughs> You're not me. I knew how to go about. And uh, if ever they ask me for an interview from the HR or anything, let's say a multinational company, they want me to train their people, I would floor them. Because I, I knew how to go about, man. Years of public speaking. If I couldn't sell myself, what the hell? And then, yes, I also was very clear on my price point, the take it or leave it price. I knew how to sell myself, market myself. And then, uh, see, one final thing is, uh, remember this much. Whatever limitations you believe are present, half of it may be true, the other half is just made up. In my case, I, I so strongly believed I could offer something of value that uh, people who were listening to me were ready to give me an opportunity. You know, you have to know your pitch. You don't know how to sell yourself. And I did that very well. One last thing. The... See, I told you, you know, I knew for a fact I was not meant to be an employee. The... There are so many people who, you know, send me, Law, I even like you, I don't want to work as an employee, 9 to 5, rat race. I want to work for myself, even if I work for 24 hours a day, I want to work for me. Fine, all that is fine. But then, you need to have the answers for what, where, when, how, which, you know, WWWH, something, whatever the abbreviation is. You need to know how to sell yourself, you need to know how to market yourself, written word, spoken word. And that is what got me into personal branding. The art of selling yourself to make money. Because end of the day, what are we doing? So bottom line, what I want to tell you through this video is, you know, when people tell me, oh, who the fuck would give you a job looking like this or who would employ you? I knew for a fact, nobody would. But I was smart enough to know how to sell myself that despite the tattoo, despite looking like a freak, I was able to convince them as to how I could add value to their organization. And uh, my pitch was simple, one minute. I had the 30 seconds pitch, one minute, three minute, seven minute, 15 minute, and even the 45 minute to one hour. It was absolutely memorized. Yeah. Anyway, like they say, you know, survival of the fittest. When you're hungry, when there's no food to eat, when you're thirsty, and there's nothing to drink, when you're sleepy and there's no place to sleep, and there's no shelter on your head, believe it or not, automatically you will... <laughs> this starts working. You don't think of excuses. You think of how you can do it. So yeah, hope this added some value and perspective to you guys. Let me know in the comments, what do you think? Good, bad, ugly? Love to hear your thoughts. Said that, this is me signing off. You guys take care. Ciao.